how do you think people thought about the idea? How do they square the idea of all men are created equal? Those very powerful words uh, at the founding of this nation. Um, how do they square that with slavery? For many Americans, saying all men were created equal required slavery because it meant that uh, the equality of white people was dependent upon others doing the work for us. In the way some people view animal labor today, and maybe in 50 years, we'll see that as a contradiction. But the notion among many Americans in the 17th, 18th century, and this would also be true for those in other societies, was that equality for white men meant that you had access to the labor of others that would allow you to equalize other differences. So uh, you could produce enough food so your family could live equally well-nourished as other families because you had slaves on the land doing the farming for you. This is Thomas Jefferson's world. So it's uh, like animal farm, uh, all animals are equal, but some are more equal than others. That's right. And I think that's that's still the way people view things. Yeah. Right? I don't know if that's a it's a liberal position or it's just a human position that um, that all humans have equal value, just on the basic level of like of humanity. But do we really believe that? I uh, we want to. I, I don't know our I don't know if our society really believes that yet. And I don't know exactly. I mean, it's su it's super complicated, of course. Um, when you realize the amount of suffering that's going on in the world, where there's uh, children dying from starvation in Africa, and to say that all humans are equal, well, a few dollars can save their life, and and instead we buy a Starbucks coffee, and are willing to pay ten, fifty, hundred thousand dollars to save a child, our child, like uh, uh, somebody from our family, and don't want to spend two dollars to save a child over in Africa. Right. So there's, and uh, I think Sam Harris or others have talked about like, well, I want, I don't wanna live in a world where we'd rather send $2 to Africa. There's something deeply human about saving those that are really close to you, the ones we love. So that, that like hypocrisy that seems to go at tension with the basic ethics of alleviating suffering in the world, that's also really human. That's also part of this ideal of all men are created equal. It's a complicated, messy world, ethically. <laughs> it, it, it is, but I mean, I think, at least the way I think about it is, so what are the things even within our own society where we choose to do something with our resources that actually doesn't help the lives of many people? So yeah. we, we invest in all kinds of things that are often because someone is lobbying for them. This happens on both sides of the aisle. This is not a political statement, right? Rather than saying, you know, if we invested a little more of our money, really a little more, we can make sure every child in this country had decent health care. We can make sure every child in this country had what they need needed to start life healthy. Uh, and that would not require us to sacrifice a lot, but it would require us to sacrifice a few things. Yeah, so there's, there's a balance there. And I, and I also noticed the passive aggressive statement you're making about how I'm spending my money. I should, I <laughs> well, me too. Spending it a little <laughs> more wisely. <laughs> I, I, you know, I like to eat the nice meals at nice restaurants. Uh, so I'm, I'm as guilty of this as you are. <laughs> <laughs> I got a couch and that couch serves no purpose. It looks nice though. No, it's a nice that looking couch. It's, Thank it's you. a nice looking that. couch. It, it's actually very clean. I got it for occasional Instagram photos to look like an adult. 